Twelve teenagers went on a dangerous exploration in Kealakekua Bay when a deadly wave hit them at the edge of a cliff. Suddenly, a once-fun adventure turned into a life-threatening situation, and they risked being swept out to sea. Kealakekua Bay is located on the Kona coast of Hawaii's Big Island, approximately 12 miles south of Kailua Kona. It was settled more than a thousand years ago and holds significant archaeological and historical sites, including religious temples known as heiaus. Notably, this is where Captain James Cook made his initial landing on the island of Hawaii. Sadly, a year later, during his third visit to the Hawaiian Islands on February 14, 1779, Captain Cook lost his life here. Today, the prominent 27-foot-tall Captain Cook Monument stands as a tribute to this renowned explorer on the South Kona coast. This structure, a white obelisk, was constructed in 1878 and can be found at Kaawaloa Flats in the western part of the Kealakekua Bay State Historical Park. The bay is known for its stunning coral reef and marine life conservation area, making it a popular spot for activities like kayaking, boat tours, snorkeling, and scuba diving. However, there have been some frightening incidents around Kealakekua Bay. People who go net fishing on the rocks sometimes get swept out by the strong currents, and sightseers can get pulled out to sea unexpectedly. The waters here are quite rough, unlike what most people are used to. Tyler Madoff was a junior lifeguard who lived in White Plains and attended Scarsdale Schools in New York. He played football for Scarsdale High School, led the crew team, and did well in his studies. His mother, Marianne Madoff, worked as the teacher in charge at Heathcote Elementary School. At just 15 years old, Tyler had a bright future ahead of him, and he was about to embark on the trip of a lifetime. Back in 2012, Tyler's parents invested $4,500 and bought a plane ticket to give their son an amazing opportunity, a month-long adventure in the breathtaking landscapes of Hawaii, organized by Bold Earth Adventures. Bold Earth Adventures is a tour company based in Colorado. On their website, Bold Earth proudly assures parents that their main aim is to provide an experience that fosters leadership, independence, and growth while ensuring safety. They also emphasize the high level of professional care and supervision provided for teenagers. For this trip, the company collaborated with a local tour operator called Hawaii Pack and Paddle. This local operator was one of only four companies authorized by the State Department of Land and Natural Resources to lead tours in the area of the Captain Cook Monument. Tyler was a part of a group of 12 teenagers hailing from different parts of the country, all eager to embark on this thrilling journey. This trip was scheduled for July 4, 2012, and Tyler and his fellow teenagers couldn't contain their excitement. Leading this adventure was the 22-year-old team leader, Andrew Mork, who was responsible for guiding and supervising the group throughout their expedition. Along with them were two contracted guides from Hawaii Pack and Paddle, as well as two team leaders from Bold Earth, among whom were Letitia Mims and Nolan Reed. These guides were only in their early 20s. The main highlight of this adventure was a kayaking excursion at Kealakekua Bay. On the bright and beautiful morning of July 4, 2012, this adventure group launched their kayaks into the sparkling waters of the bay, ready to embark on an exciting day of learning and exploration. The experienced guides were eager to impart their technical skills and knowledge to the young kayakers, teaching them important techniques like capsize recoveries. The journey to the Captain Cook Monument was the next highlight of their day taking approximately one hour of paddling in their kayaks. Nolan, the expert from Hawaii Pack and Paddle, led the way on a hike from the coast up to the iconic monument. Although the hike itself might not have been the most thrilling part, the group made it to the top with Nolan's guidance, knowing that he was well-versed in the area and had a deep understanding of its surroundings. At around 10 a.m., they reached the monumental landmark, feeling a sense of accomplishment and awe at the significance of the site. After exploring the monument, they returned to the water, which was not far away, to continue their adventure. The next few hours were spent snorkeling in the bay as they encountered the vibrant marine life beneath the waves. 
At around 1.30 p.m., everyone gathered for lunch, and then Nolan guided the group to some pools teeming with tiny fish and shrimp. Meanwhile, Andrew stayed with Leticia and a few other campers. By 2.30 p.m., when they finished their meal, the other guys were getting ready for the next part of the adventure. Andrew instructed everyone to pack up their belongings as they were going to leave the bay. So the students collected all their stuff. At this point, Nolan approached Andrew and shared the idea that they still had plenty of time before the next planned activity, which was just more snorkeling. They could consider doing something different if they wanted to, thanks to the extra time they had available. Nolan managed to convince Andrew to follow his plan and introduce him to some extraordinary things on the island that Andrew had never seen before. This piqued Andrew's curiosity, and he agreed to Nolan's idea. Nolan then informed the group that they would be embarking on a hike along the coastline. While Nolan appeared confident and enthusiastic about the hike, Andrew had a sense that something might be unusual. Instead of taking them on a regular hiking path, Nolan led the group to the south shore near Napupu Lighthouse, an area known to be treacherous and off-limits. The terrain there consisted of jagged and crater-filled lava rocks, with violent surf pounding and churning the coastal waters. Andrew realized they were entering uncharted territory, as there was no evidence of anyone ever venturing into this area before. This fact made it extremely dangerous, and Andrew became concerned about their safety. Nevertheless, they proceeded, well aware of the risks associated with exploring such a hazardous location. Surprisingly, it turned out that Nolan didn't have much experience navigating the area. However, he tried to boost the group's spirits by exclaiming that they were experiencing the real essence of Hawaii, which was the reason they had joined the trip. The team found the situation exhilarating, as they found themselves about 30 feet inside the trail around Keala Kakua Bay and the Captain Cook Monument. At this moment, Tyler approached Andrew because he was feeling uncomfortable from the sunburn he had gotten while snorkeling earlier. Andrew gave him his Under Armour shirt for sun protection, and Tyler was able to carry on with the journey with ease. As they continued, they reached a breathtaking cliffside view, but they also noticed the waves crashing below and the coastal swell becoming more intense. Realizing that it wasn't safe to enter the water in this area, the group decided to continue their hike along the shoreline. Leticia suggested to some of the kids that they could go into the water safely if they linked their arms together, forming a big unit to protect against the strong waves. As they continued, they came across various baths, like tidal pools with blowholes mixed in. The guys named this area the Fun Zone and encouraged the students to go down into the tide pools. However, the surf was becoming more hazardous, and the tide was rising. Some of the teenagers even sat in the tide pools, which were also referred to as toilet bowls. These pools filled with water and then forcefully drained back into the ocean, creating a risky situation. Despite this, most of the students seemed unaware of the potential danger. They trusted that the guides knew what they were doing, and would keep them safe, so they didn't realize the seriousness of the situation they were in. Andrew never received any warning from Nolan or Leticia about the potential risks of what they were doing. Part of the group was in one of the queen baths, while the others were about 45 feet away in a larger queen bath. Queen baths are specific types of tide pools formed by sinkholes surrounded by sharp, solidified lava rock on the island. From his bath, Nolan shouted for everyone to gather inside. Upon hearing this, Andrew quickly left his queen bath and joined Nolan's group. However, just as Andrew was jumping into the second queen bath, a massive wave suddenly crashed over them, filling the bath with its forceful water. The powerful wave hit everyone in that large bath, slamming them against the rock walls. The water strength was so overwhelming that it began to swirl them around, leaving them feeling helpless in the face of its force. When the wave hit, the group found themselves trapped with no means of escaping the dangerous grip of the pools. Andrew tried to stabilize himself by holding on to a nearby rock. Fortunately, as the water receded, he managed to get out of the pool. 
Looking back, he noticed that many others were still stuck inside. Some of the teenagers hurriedly sought shelter outside the tide pools, grabbing onto anything they could find to prevent being pulled back into the ocean by the forceful waves. Unfortunately, Tyler and the others were struck by the powerful waves, which smashed against the lava rocks within the tide pools. The wave was said to be at least six feet high. Guide Kelsey did her best to assist some of the students, grabbing hold of their swimsuits to keep them from being dragged out into the water. As Andrew stood above the pool, another wave suddenly came crashing down. He managed to brace himself once more, holding on tightly. However, he could see that everyone was struggling at this point. The water's force was pulling people back into the ocean slowly. Andrew decided to take action and leaped back into the pool, attempting to grab someone and help them get out of harm's way. He urgently told them they needed to get out immediately since the water was receding, offering them a slim chance to escape. However, the situation wasn't favorable. Andrew became aware of the immense amount of water present, which could even wash someone over the cliff's edge at the far end of the pool before potentially sweeping them out to sea. Just when things seemed like they couldn't get any worse, a third wave came crashing down. The waves pounded violently against the lava rocks in the tide pools, hitting everyone, including Tyler, once again. The turbulent waters pulled Tyler through the pool and over the cliff along the shoreline, dragging him into the ocean. Andrew watched in helplessness as Tyler was taken from the pool by the receding water, unable to do anything to save him. Andrew was too far away, and if he jumped in, he feared he would also be pulled into the ocean. Tyler's face showed no emotion, and he made no effort to save himself. Andrew thought Tyler might have been knocked unconscious by the impact of the waves. With the rushing, churning waters, Tyler was carried away through the jagged tidal pool, towards the cliff of the shoreline area, and into the ocean. Matthew Alzot, another team from Florida, was also swept into the sea during the incident. Luckily, a local fisherman passing by in his boat came to his rescue about 15 minutes later. After the unfortunate event, it took over an hour for emergency responders to arrive at the site. The search for Tyler involved a massive effort, with scuba divers, helicopters, and boats covering a 10-mile radius around the area where he went missing. Tyler's parents rushed to Hawaii on July 6 and hired private boats to join the search, utilizing boats, divers, and helicopters in their quest to find their son. During this time, tour boats also contributed to the search by scanning the waters, and the local guide stepped in to rescue some of the stranded teens. Despite the collaborative efforts of the Hawaii County Fire Department, U.S. Coast Guard, and police, the search continued for several days. But sadly, Tyler's body was never found. The search finally came to an end on Monday, July 9th, leading to the return of Tyler's parents to their home. After the unfortunate incident, both Bold Earth and Hawaii Pack and Paddle started blaming each other for the decision to take the young people to the tide pools. Some people also suggested that the teens might have ignored the guide's warnings to stay on higher ground. As a result, there remains ongoing disagreement about what exactly happened that day and who, if anyone, is responsible. Tragically, Tyler's body was never found leaving his parents devastated. In response, they decided to file a wrongful death lawsuit against both Bold Earth and Hawaii Pack and Paddle. The Madoffs especially held Andrew, team leader from the Bold Earth trip, accountable for the unfortunate incident. They believed that Andrew exercised poor judgment by allowing the two guides from Hawaii Pack and Paddle to take the teens to the tide pools, leading to this heartbreaking outcome. The family's lawyers argued in court that despite Bold Earth's claim of conducting background checks on their employees for any criminal records, they failed to properly check the trip's leader, who had three marijuana-related convictions. They also revealed that the leader was once kicked out of a bar on the Big Island during a previous trip for the company in 2011. The grieving parents emphasized that their lawsuit, seeking punitive damages for negligence and emotional distress, 
wasn't driven by money. Instead, they wanted to hold the companies accountable, ensuring that no other family would have to endure the pain they experienced. The Madoff's lawsuit was eventually settled in 2014, and the amount agreed upon was kept confidential. The DLNR, or Department of Land and Natural Resources, took away Hawaii Pack and Paddle's permit because they found that the company broke three rules. These violations included staying longer than allowed in certain places, going outside the authorized area, and having more guests than allowed. Even though no criminal charges were filed, the company faced consequences for its actions. We would like to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed watching, take a dive on the like and subscribe buttons and hit the bell icon so you get notified when we come back with another exciting story.